these devices are actually very useful as biosensors, so they can detect a single molecule out of a million molecules. Hi, I'm Andrea Armani. I'm an assistant professor in the Viterbi School of Engineering at USC. Today I'd like to tell you about my research group and my incredible researchers who work here at Viterbi. The focus of my research group is trying to develop new ways to better detect cancer in blood, bacteria in water, basically pathogens in the air. We also work on coming up with new types of optical devices to improve optical computing um, and to improve satellite communications. So we basically have a two-prong attack, um, coming up with new types of optical platforms and then using those in coming up with better diagnostics and better methods to study biological systems. So this testing setup is a CO2 laser testing setup. It's used to create with what we call uh, mushroom devices or microtoroid devices. A toroid is a donut. Uh, how this works is we have a CO2 laser, which is this black laser in the back. The beam comes out and bounces off of a mirror, which is in the corner. The beam then comes and is focused by this yellow lens, and then it hits the sample right here. The sample is actually a table or a glass disc on top of a pillar. When the beam hits it, it actually melts and forms a toroid. Um, so in this testing setup, we actually characterize the devices that we made on the last one. So we use a laser to actually inject light into the tiny mushrooms, and the light actually circulates around inside, and it circulates around about 100,000 times. These devices are actually very useful as biosensors, so they can detect a single molecule out of a million molecules. And the reason why they have this capability is because they're able to detect a very specific wavelength of light. And by monitoring that change in wavelength of light, we can tell whenever a very specific molecule binds on the surface. How we actually determine what this wavelength of light is, is we scan over a series of wavelengths, and whenever there's a dip, that's the exact wavelength of light that's being coupled in. As this dip changes, then we know molecules have bound on the surface. And we actually image the device using this camera, because the devices are around 40 to 100 microns in diameter. Now, around 100 microns is the width of your hair. So these are very, very tiny devices. So this is actually a top view of this device, and this is where the laser is coupled in.